I go to the beach every day. Oh my gosh, she's so nervous, Simone. <laughs> You know, I have not laughed this hard in a long time, and I have you to thank for it. Oh, it's no biggie. Wait, but to me it is. If you hadn't come along when you did, besides would have me doing some creepy guy in some gross motel room. Another guy I could have killed, for all I know. Hey, what are friends with pepper spray for? <laughs> I miss you, Simone. And straight or gay, you'll always be my friend. <laughs> oh, you are one dumb lesbian, Simone. He blasts me with pepper spray and takes my meal ticket and gets away with it. Hey, ladies get in position. If you tell him to get that on my stick, okay? Go ahead. You know, I hope they have skates to fit James so he can learn to skate. I'm sure they do. Come on, son. He'll be skating around me and uh, Sheridan in no time. Oh, good. It appears Sheridan and Chris and the three James are going to go ice skating. <laughs> oh, Indora. Yeah. You wait until you see what Mommy has planned. A real slam dunk. Yeah. <laughs> My life is over and it's all your fault. Goodbye, Ethan. I know you didn't want to end up with this. And I don't blame you. You're always so strong, so vital and alive. But to see you now trapped inside your body with death the only way out. It's too sad for work. get help for you if I have to hike to the nearest town to call Gwen. She'll send an ambulance for you. And police to arrest Teresa and Noah. What do you think, Dan? Uh, I guess it's all right. Come on, let's roll. Hey, look. There's another car behind those bushes. If you're up here all alone, how come there are two cars there? That was here when I got here. Uh-huh. Hands in the air. Now, pal. Am I under arrest? We ask the question. All right, take it easy, guys, okay? We don't buy that you're here alone. Look, I told you that other car was out here when I got here. And what was that noise we just heard? You have to break up me and Fox. It works, and it's your fault. Listen to me, young lady. You are... No, you insisted I got that spell. I know, but what, when do you listen to a word I say? Ah. You hear this, Indora? The moxie of some mortals. <laughs> you threatened to out me as a witch if I didn't accede to your demands. I was bluffing. Well, I didn't know you were bluffing. I have a child to protect. I'm a mortal. What kind of a witch are you? Letting the mortals call the shots here, huh? Right now, I'm a witch who's seconds away from casting a spell on you. I'm sorry, Tabitha. It's... I blew it. I blew it with Fox. I lost him to Valor. Right, well, let's just rewind a bit, shall we, dear? Now tell me what happened when you went back to the office. Well, I made a fool of myself, that's what happened. How so? Well, it turns out that Fox and Valerie were not kissing. The boys in the basement just made it look like that in your magic hole. Oh. Oh. oh, be it for me to say I won't do that could happen, but I won't do that could happen. They were just congratulating each other on saving the Kingdom Poor Project. They weren't making out. And I made such a scene in front of Fox. Oh, my gosh. He's never going to forgive me. And I don't blame him. How's that? Perfect. You know, I always have trouble getting him tied up around my ankles. But you get him as snugly as the least did. I'm sorry. It's just that... It's okay, Shredder. I'm just glad I'm here to help. So am I. 
So let's get you all laced up. Yep, paybacks are a bit slow. Three of them to be exact. Hey, yo, salt and pepper. Either you got a light, we won't smoke. Yeah, you shouldn't even a cigarette can kill you. You ready to go? Yeah. Hey, 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 what's your rush, ladies? What around town have you two like to party? Uh, no, we don't. You don't even know us. We know more than you think. Okay, stop the chase already. Getting ready to see that coming to her. Too bad having a good time isn't a thing. Because we could have had ourselves a blast. Come on, we'll check out the roadhouse. Tiny's always up for some fun. Oh, hey, uh, you dropped your bag. Oh, thanks, Joe. Stop what? You see that? No, Gay trick just stopped me up. No, I didn't. Sick. Yeah, you curb. Keep your hands to yourself. Hey, no, Simone would never do that. Hey, I've been felt up enough to know when I'm being felt up, and she was definitely caught in a field. I was not. What's going on? Did this sick lesbo tried to feel up my friend. Patty, I did not. Feels so dirty. Why would she say you did if you didn't? What the hell is wrong with you, Simone? Now, Ethan. And in such a sad way. No one ever had a better big brother growing up. You're always so patient and loving to Fox, my sister and me. <laughs> I remember when we were jumping on the trampoline mother and father had given us one summer. And you were being careful, taking slow, precise jumps to show us how it was done. And of course, I didn't have the patience to learn. <laughs> I wanted to reach for the sky before Fox and Sis had a chance to do it. So I insisted on going first and started jumping higher and higher. And you said I'd get hurt if I wasn't careful. But I didn't listen. <laughs> Before long, I jumped so high that I flew off the trampoline. And I could see the lawn rushing to meet me head on, when all of a sudden you appeared between me and the grass, catching me just in time to keep me from crash landing. I probably would have broken my arm. Or worse, if you hadn't gotten to me in time. my life, Ethan. And I wish I could save your life now, but I can't. All I can do is get word to Gwen so she can get you back to Harmony where you can die in peace and with dignity the way you want to. Not here with that damn Teresa. I'm even if I take me back to harm me and Gwen's gonna take Ethan off of life support before you have a chance to get better. Come on, Noah. Derek can put those cops to leave before they find Ethan. Look, you guys might as well leave, all right? I told you the truth. I'm the only one here. We don't buy it. We know we heard something before coming from over in that direction. What's behind those doors? One is to a closet. Yeah? What's in it? It's a closet, man. There's coats, snowshoes, stuff like that. What's behind the other door? It's two bedrooms. Well, I guess I better check it out. Mr. Crane would fire us if uh, we aren't thorough. Hey, look, whatever happened to taking a guy at his word, huh? What's the big deal if you're here alone, like you said? You got me there. said it was here alone. Well, he lied. And luckily for you gentlemen, I'm ready to set the record straight. Prison, here I come. You've been assumed.
Who are you, ma'am? I'm Fancy Crane. This is my family's cabin. Why did you lie and say you were here all alone? All right, Fancy. Tell them the truth. I tried to save Ethan. Just wish Fancy had forgiven Noah for helping me. It's okay. Tell them why I lied about being all alone here. For you gentlemen, some coffee, hot chocolate. Why did you shut that door, Miss Crane? What's going on in the bedroom? This is it. Nothing's going on in the bedroom. I shut the door because the room's a mess. My boyfriend and I have been giving the bed a lot of use. If you get my drift. We'd like to see some ID. Are you people cut off from the outside world? Everyone knows I'm Fancy Crane. Prove it, ma'am. I didn't hear please. She sure sounds like a crane. Please, ma'am. May we see some ID? Well, since you put it so nicely. Why hasn't Fancy told them about Ethan yet? I trust you believe me now? Yes, ma'am. So, Miss Crane, um, what was that uh, strange whooshing sound I heard when you uh, opened the bedroom door? Oh, I keep a white noise machine wherever I am to help me sleep. Not that Noah and I have been getting much rest. <laughs> Why are you two looking at us like that? I'd hate to have to call my grandfather, Alistair Crane and tell him my honesty is being questioned by two officers who are counting on receiving their pensions one day. No, don't bother calling Mr. Crane. Yeah, if you say that whooshing sound coming from the bedroom is a white noise machine, we believe you. Good. What is Fancy up to? Okay, I feel stupid. The bus is around. You wanted to guarantee that. Successful career, and thanks to the spell I cast, that is exactly what's happening. And you said he was able to salvage that deal that you almost torpedoed by stopping Valerie from reaching him during dinner and push for us. You knew the price Fox would have to pay to be successful in business was to lose out on true love. So unless you've got some cheese to go with your wine, put a cork in it, dear. Are you sure you can't undo the stuff? And my foolish. And more. And more. Once you make a pact with the boys of Grimstone, that is it. More. I can't believe I did this. No, no. Frankly, dear, neither can I. Well, this is turning out better than I thought. Little Miss Lesbo is getting slammed by her own father. It's revolting enough that you're a lesbian. But the hit on a straight girl, damn, she's a stranger at that. Daddy, I didn't hit on her, I swear. You lying her. You picked up her bag, handed it to her, and then you copped a feel doing it. Yeah. Liar, I didn't touch you that way. Men would never do that. That's rich, coming from a cheap trick turning oh. skank like you. Hey, my friend doesn't do that anymore. Can you get her to do you instead? No, and shut up. Not that you apologize for groping my friend. I didn't grope her. Straight or gay, I am not in the trap. Hey, listen here, you freak. No, you listen to me, you lying sleeve. I suppose. What's going on, honey? Well, your gay daughter here tried to hit on this young lady. Mom, I didn't. You have to believe me. Of course I believe you. I know you didn't. So why am I not surprised that my ex-whore of a wife would believe her deviant daughter? That's right, he's going to be uh, Harmony's next star hockey player. James! Uh, are you all right, son? Uh, uh, I think I'm, we need to take a break. Uh, I know I can do with one. Why don't we all go take a rest? Oh, sure, then. Why don't you keep on skating? I'm sure James would love to watch you. So would I. Okay. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> okay. I wish Fox were here. We'd have fun skating together. Boo hoo, woe is you. Fuck up, Kay. Get on with your life. Some other young man will come along and take Fox's place. No, I don't see that happening, Tabitha. I really love him. And Maria does, too. Yeah, she said so, did she? I can tell. Where's Maria? <laughs> don't worry. I left her at home with a sitter I conjured up. Who, old Mother Hubbard? Oh, no, not Mom that old thief. Last time that she babysat, she stole all the food in the house, including Fluffy's kibble. <laughs> no, Maria is in the hands of a renowned child expert. Mine! The late Mine. Dr. Benjamin Spock. Mine. I'm impressed. Yes, Mine. well, whatever. Leave me alone, dear. I have to concentrate now. On what? On Sheridan. <laughs> mm. It's time for me to do what the dark side pays me for. Um, I don't like the sound of that. Tabitha, what, what are you up to? Well, Sheridan loves to get involved with Chris. Obviously, she's not over losing the loose yet. Um, I'll be. But that's going to change. Once Sheridan takes Simone for Naomi with pepper spray is turning out better than I thought. Now with our homo hating dad in her case, Simone's going to be too busy defending herself to about what happens with Jess. How can you take the word of strangers over that of your own daughters? If she says that she didn't touch this girl's breast inappropriately, then she didn't. Well, no daughter of mine should want to touch a woman's breast in the first place. It is sick and unnatural. With Eve as a role model, it's no surprise. Liz, I meant what I said earlier. You stay out of Eve's life. I used to think that I had the most perfect family in the world. A loving wife. An angel who saves lives. Two beautiful daughters. One a tennis star, and the other a book-savvy young lady. But hell, I was wrong. Come to find out my ex-wife is and was a slut. My daughter? Well, hell, my daughter, she had a baby with her half-brother. Now I have my little girl. She can't control her sexual urges to be with another woman. What the hell is next, huh? Hey, Liz, you gonna tell me that you, that your man and your name used to be Lester? T.C., Simone is still your daughter, and you still love her, you lost. Don't you patronize me, Julian. If Fox was trying to hit on some guy, you'd be singing a different tune. T.C., I don't think that being gay is, is just about sex. It's about love, like all of us. It's about trying to find love and trying to keep it. You're absolutely right, Julian. Julian is a crane. And if you think I'm going to stand around here and let you defend her sick lesbian ways, you got another thing coming. God, the old folks can talk forever. What I want from you is for you to apologize for going lesbo on me. I didn't go lesbo on you. You rubbed up against me. No way! Yeah, we're normal. We like men. We are freaks like you. Well, you should be glad that you're into men, because I can guarantee all of you that no woman would ever want you. Sweetheart, we don't need to stoop to their level. What do you mean, our level, bitch? Don't talk to my mom that way. <gasps> oh, my God. Stop. You touch my daughter, I will kill you. Oh, not if I kill all of you first. And Fancy told the police that Ethan and I are here. Since Noah and I have identified ourselves and answered all your questions, I'm sure you gentlemen have other police business to attend to. Be careful on those slick mountain roads, boys. Mm. Wait, not so fast. There's something that's still bothering me. Oh? Our department usually gets a call from someone at Crane when a family member comes here. Only we didn't receive a call this time. Why is that? I didn't think it was necessary to inform your department about my personal plan. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Crane, but Mr. Crane will need to know that you bucked the system that he established with our department. No. I mean, I don't want my grandfather to know I'm here with Noah. That's why I didn't alert the office to alert you. 
Yeah, we knew something wasn't right. The truth is, my grandfather doesn't approve of my seeing Noah, so we decided to keep our rendezvous private. <laughs> we understand, right? Good. But, uh, your grandfather's gonna still need to know that you're here. It's almost Christmas. Why don't I make a donation to your department? Whatever you think is enough to forget about calling my grandfather. You trying to bribe us, ma'am? Is it working? Hey, just cut us a little slack, all right? All we want to do is be alone. I don't think you are alone. Look, I know I heard something before. Uh, it was either coming from that bedroom or, or that closet. Look, no one is here but Noah and me. Well, your boyfriend did say the place might have a rat. If there is a rat around here somewhere, I assure you I will get rid of it one way or another. I say we check out the bedroom and that closet. If you insist on checking either the bedroom or the closet, to hell with it. I will call my grandfather to have you both arrested. There's no one else here. So leave. The chief will have her hide, but don't check out this place from top to bottom. My grandfather will have your jobs if you don't leave us alone. Now go. Why do you object to us just checking out the bedroom or the closet? If there is some disgusting creature in the closet, I want it to stay there. With any luck, it will suffocate. And as for my bedroom, it's private. And messy. Uh, very messy. There's, you know, there's clothes strewn all over the place, and um, the bed is actually, uh, <laughs> well, it's, look, we've been very ambitious. <laughs> what are you doing? Look, it's not that I don't appreciate it, because I really do, but two seconds ago, you were ready to go trek through the snow to find Ethan some help, and now you're protecting both him and Teresa. Why? What's going on? versus gay girl action. Ha! Merry Christmas to me. Leave Swan alone. I will teach right. you to mess with me, Leslie. I didn't touch you. Get out of my way. I'm going to cut you, too. Cece, watch out. I'm not afraid of this little girl. Oh, yeah? Well, you ought to be. Help! 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 And besides, it looks like Simone would live to be a lesbian another day. Now, come on, let's go. No, I thought to call the police. Those girls committed a hate crime. I said, let's go. Oh, and I said no. Come on, let's split before the cops get here. I will see you again, Wes. I'm Julian. Thank you for protecting me, Daddy. Do not talk to me, Simone. Look, Sean Sheridan's waiting. <laughs> Sheridan skates with such beauty. Such incredible beauty. What are you up to? You'll see. Tabitha, you can't do that. Sheridan will fall through the ice. You could freeze to death or drown. Good, but you won't. Why not? Watch. Yeah. 
that the dark side could not conjure love. Well, they can't, per se. I just gave it a little boost. But you gag on love and romance. Why would you want to cast a spell to bring Sheridan and Chris closer together? Elementary, my dear Kay. Elementary. Thank God it just grazed you, Julian. Just keep this handkerchief on there until it stops bleeding. Everybody else okay? Besides protecting my gay daughter from street scum? Well, I'm fine. I'm sure Simone is grateful, T.C. Aren't you, sweetheart? You all make me sick. I didn't mean to touch that girl, Daddy, I swear. Yeah. But you're gay. You're lesbian. And your mother's a slut. Hell, she chose her rich, white sugar daddy over me and your sister. Please don't call mom any names. Well, your mother is a slut, and you are a lesbian. That's enough, T.C. A grown man like you acting like a schoolyard bully. You're ashamed of yourself, as ashamed as we are of you. Hey, give me your cell phone so I can call the police. Whoa, you got to lose the attitude and let's go. Not until I make sure Simone's okay. No can do, babe. Look, you were real, real bad before, running off with Simone after she... Damn near blinded me with that pepper spray. That was not cool. Hey, I'm sorry if you were hurt, but, but, but I'll tell you what. I, I will forgive you if you come back with me now and get to work. No, I told you I hate turning tricks. It's creepy and disgusting, and it's really cold out. Uh, you know what? You're upset. I, I get it. Okay, but this happens every single time, honey. You, you go back, run back home to your family and your friends that tell you things are going to be better, and they never are. And then you always run back to me. Look, I love you, Spike, but I don't want to turn tricks for you anymore. Okay, forget about all that, okay? I just see, I just see you so upset because of me, honey. Huh? No, no, it's, it's not you. It, it's just the whole situation. Well, whatever. I mean, the, the point is you are upset. You know what, hey? Look, take this, honey. This will help you feel a lot better. Teresa are here? Teresa's in the closet, isn't she? Yeah, she's in the closet. Oh, you two certainly aren't making this easy for me. What do you mean? What are you doing? Be quiet so I can think. Will you please tell me where your head is about this whole Ethan Teresa thing? And do it quick, all right? Those cops are suspicious. They go into either the closet or the bedroom. Teresa and I are done for. I know. Look, let's go already. We came here, we searched the place, found... Miss Crane with her guy. End of story. Yeah, I don't think so. Those two are really nervous. And why did that Noah guy lie about being here alone? Miss Crane told you they're secret lovers. Yeah, I think it's more than that. I think they're hiding something. But what? Wanting to be with women. You are an abomination, Simone. What kind of man stands there and says such hateful things to his own flesh and blood? Because, Eve, she needs to hear the truth. This lifestyle that she has chosen is wrong. Men with men, women with women, this is disgusting. The only thing that's disgusting is your ignorance, T.C. Being gay is, is not a, a disease or a choice or, or a reason to be hated. And this prejudice that 
you have towards homosexuality is no different than the senseless hatred that fuels racial discrimination. Have you forgotten what black people have gone through? What they've endured? Slavery? Segregation? Lynching? What about all the times that you've been judged wrongly just because of your color? This is the same thing, T.C. For you to stand here and judge Simone and rebuke her and revile her because of one trait that she happened to be born with. You know what, Eve? She must get that from your side of the family. Not mine. How did you ever become an educator teaching young minds? Hate, bully, exclude anyone different? Lord well, Julian, I don't need a lecture from you. Now, what you need is to wake up and to remember that Simone is still your daughter. She's so kind and good-hearted and honest. She's any parent's dream. <laughs> that is great coming from you, huh? You know, you have morals of a junkyard dog. And Eve. You have the same morals of the alley cat. That's why you two think this is so perfect that my little daughter is a lesbian. Well, I don't. I think it's sick. Just the sight of you, Simone, makes me sick. And your mother, you make me sick. You know what, Julian? Don't bother getting me anything for Christmas. Just the sight of you getting caught by a gang member. Protecting Eve's lesbian daughter's virtue. Oh, that's a gift in itself. What are you still doing here, Liz? I told you to stay away from Eve and me. Harmony's a small town. This is a public place. It's just pure luck that I was here to watch you and Eve weep more than misery to his son. Take it. You know you want to. I... Uh, I, I want to help Simone. Even though she hurt me. Yeah, uh, Simone's my friend. I'm the man that she loved. The dude that's totally crazy about you. I mean, listen, Simone has bad news, Jess. I mean, you could have got cut back there with her. I mean, that's why I followed you here, to make sure that you weren't hurt. Now listen to me. I want to protect you, okay? Can't do it if we're not together. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take you back home, right? Home to our place. Keep you warm until we get home. You saved my life. How can I ever repay you? These tiny places are warm enough. <sighs> Sheridan, what a scare you gave us all, dear. You'd be a human popsicle now if Chris hadn't rescued you. Oh, he risked his life just for me. <laughs> Real selfless nobility. He reminds us of Louise, doesn't he, Kay? You're very lucky to have a man like Chris in your life, Sheridan. Very lucky indeed. Yes. Yes, I am. Well, run along, you two. Get something hot in her as soon as you can. I will. Come on, James. Come on, boy. Well, it seems like a love has been made. Okay, I, I don't understand. How can helping people fall in love make you happy? Are you in love with folks? Yes. Are you happy? Not at the moment. There you have it. Being in love with folks has caused you nothing but misery, pain, and upset. And the same fate will befall Chris and Sheridan eventually. They'll come to love each other, and then they'll come to regret it. Why? Stay tuned. You'll see. I don't understand why Van Susan turned me in and Noah for kidnapping Eve. I mean, she was all set to hike down to the mountain, pick up the phone, call Gwen, and call the police. Now the police are here and she's trying to get them to leave. I don't know why she's doing this, but it's great. <laughs> Two already. If you look any more tight, those cops will know we're hiding something. We are hiding something, all right? 
Teresa's in the closet and our comb-tailed half-brother's hooked up to a noisy respirator in the bedroom. I know I heard a weird noise coming from the bedroom. I know, and Miss Crane said it was her white noise machine. My ex had one of those. It never sounded like someone breathing. We'd better hope those cops are more afraid of the cranes than they are curious about what's going on in here. If they're not, we don't stand a chance. And neither does Ethan. 